Okay, it's Roger once again. If you know and you've been following me, I've been talking a lot about this long haul COVID and what what's going on with this. And I'm telling you, it's all related to bacteria. This is more fuel for the fire here. Glucose isomerase has a wide range of sources, including microorganisms such as bacteria. Glucose isomerase. That's an enzyme. It's a class of enzymes, and it is from microorganisms such as bacteria. Now, what does that do? What is that, that enzyme necessary for? All right, this is your brain. This is your brain on COVID. Now, why does it look like this? It's not, it doesn't have any energy. Why doesn't it have any, any energy? It doesn't have any glucose. Why doesn't it have any glucose? It doesn't have any enzymes. Why doesn't it have any enzymes? The bacteria that was living there is not producing the enzymes, apparently. All right, this is what they're trying to understand, is why the brain is, is so depressed like this. It says it's not fully understand why this COVID-2 virus causes this cognitive decline. Now, previous research shown that during severe COVID, the brain decreases glucose consumption. Well, why does it decrease the consumption? Does it just not have the glucose there, or does it just not want to bother with the glucose? I say something can't convert the glucose. And what is converting the glucose? bacteria that creates enzymes. If the enzymes aren't there and the bacteria has been killed by some other bacteria, then you're not going to have the glucose. Now, don't forget, I say that every membrane, so your frontal parietal lobe or wherever they're talking about that is a front, yeah, frontal parietal, parietal network, is has its own type of membrane and that apparently is being invaded and damaged and that is given way to this not having the bacteria in there that normally would create that that enzyme that creates the glucose. That's what I'm taking away from it. Now, can we prove this easily? Absolutely. This is not something that's hard to do. First of all, if we gave them something that some probiotics or whatever, even like a, a fecal transplant, because almost instantly that stuff goes right into your into your, what they call the interstitium, which is a fluid highway flows through the body, and bacteria that's good for you zip, go right where it's supposed to be, and you may see the brains just start to light up again. It might happen that quick. It's, it's, it literally is almost instantly that these probiotics go to work, if they can get in you in the right way. And it appears that the fecal micro, microbial transplant is the one way that seems to work very, very well but it's right now not quite fully understood and um, it's not being pushed at all. So don't forget now if you get this your brain goes from being 50 years old to 70 years old. You lose 10 IQ points and you become foggy and this is what's causing it is not having the glucose or not being able to absorb the glucose. I don't care which one it is. It's still going to be related to bacteria. All right, there's this new research on collagen, and the new research on collagen could influence the way we treat and work with COVID-19. Now, why? All right, here's the issue. They still don't understand this. They have now, they, they realize there is this fluid-filled spaces in the tissues they've never seen before. It's called the interstitium, and this is where all of these particles flow. However, they're talking about it as a new way to treat cancer because they think cancer cells get into this fluid and move around and then attach somewhere else. That is not the case. It's cancer cells are continuously in that fluid. The things that stop them from attaching anywhere is the bacteria that live in that interstitium kills them. They're always there. Every day, 24 hours, 7 days a week, you got cancer in you everywhere and your body has to kill it before it takes root that is the key if you don't have the bacteria you can't stop it and I'm going to show you where the bacteria live 
All right, don't forget, this is very, very new research. Just 2018, they did an article on this, and they said they think the cancer cells are traveling through here. That's why cancer can show up anywhere in the body. However, normally what happens is if you get a certain type of cancer, like, say, lymph cancer, lymph nodes, skin cancer, if you don't have the bacteria in one area that creates the correct kind of mucus and enzymes and catalysts, which is what happens in these fluid-filled bags where the bacteria live, they create all these products. The mucus and the slime and all that keeps nasty stuff out. Enzymes and so forth break down food to bring it in. They kill other stuff that's invading you. If your colonies of bacteria are not exactly correct, you're invadable. If you're invadable, you're what they call a pre-existing condition. And some of the people don't have the right bacteria in their lungs because that's one type of bacteria. They might not have the right bacteria for their kidneys. They get diabetes, not the right bacteria for their heart. They get heart congestion and so forth. All Everybody has, every spot in your body has a different type of, of bacteria that lives in that style of membrane. So... Normally, if you got lymph node cancer, you could get it anywhere in your body because if you don't have the right bacteria living here in a lymph node, why should you have it somewhere else? They're all connected together. That's the key. Now they realize they're all connected together. They think now they're just moving around with the bad, back, with the bad um, cells. But these kill them. They come by and say, oh, no, 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 you're done. Kick, kick, killed instantly. So the only thing I can possibly think of is that if the bacteria living here is supposed to be living in this particular type of chemistry, it's also going to be moving over and living in the chemistry over here, which is the same as this. If it's dead here, it's not going to be alive over there. It's just a case of repopulating the bacteria. And that's what probiotics do. And that is really what this fecal, micro, uh, fecal transplant does. Absolutely amazing. All is putting some, some good poop into somebody else's got no poop that's good. And they've already killed their bacteria. Their bacteria cannot fight. It cannot produce the products that you need. And it cannot produce the, the immune responses, which is the catalyst and enzymes, mucus. And it cannot produce the, the enzymes and catalysts that break down food so that you can ingest the right kind of vitamins and minerals and metals and all the things that make your body correct. You know, your skin nice and subtle and your... You know, all, all the things, your tendons, your muscles, all need a certain type of chemistry. And that is done by the chemists that are the bacteria that live in these fluid-filled bags just discovered. So this is not something that goes way back. They just discovered these were even here. Now they discovered that they move everything in and out. And now they got to understand that the bacteria that lives in here and probiotics is the key to health. Exactly what Hippocrates said. I don't think he called it interstitium, though. All right, it's not just me talking about probiotics and how good they are. This is the National Institute of Health Library of Medicine. This is from 2021, and it's about probiotics and the prevention and treatment of COVID-19 and their current perspective and future prospects. And if you go, I'm just going to go right down to the bottom because I read the whole thing, very, very informative. And the conclusions are just hard to believe that they haven't taken more of an aggressive approach at this. Conclusions. Evidence supports probiotics role in regulating the immune system. All right, that's one statement suggesting a definitive role, definitive means absolutely certain role, for probiotics in viral infections. COVID's a viral infection, so a lot of things, flu and so forth. Probiotic supplementation could reduce the severity of COVID-19, morbidity and mortality. Now, could is a tricky word. Is it, well, we don't know, and basically that's what, oh, well, they don't know. Well, they're saying it could. Well, I'm taking that as it does, because I've seen that it appear, appears to do that. Now, that's, that was a tricky word. Now, probiotics can inhibit cytokine storms. I mean, it says they can. It's, that's another tricky word. Is that, does that mean maybe they are, maybe they do, maybe they don't? I say probiotics can inhibit cytokine storms. 
right? by simultaneously boosting the in innate immunity. So apparently probiotics can simultaneously boost the innate immunity and evade the exaggeration of the adaptive immunity, which means your body has to try to figure out what to do. They're evading that by using the probiotics, which is challenged to respond quickly to the viral onslaught. So let's just read it and think about it carefully. Probiotics can inhibit cytokine storms. Right? Simultaneously, they boost the innate system given your own body its own immunity and going around the fact that you have to adapt all right because that's challenging to adapt quickly and so the probiotics appear to go evading that onslaught now probiotics induce suppression of the inflammatory cytokine response may prevent both the severity and occurrence of acute respiratory distress syndrome. Another tricky word, it may. All right, probiotics induce suppression. So first of all, let's take it two ways of looking at it. Probiotics induce suppression of the inflammatory cytokine response. So they're saying probiotics do, does suppress the inflammatory cytokine storm, and it may prevent both the severity and occurrence of ARDS. All right, I'm taking those as two basic statements. All right, that makes probiotics an attractive add-on. Adjunct means an additional thing to use to help. Now, it says, inventing effective therapy will transform the impact of the pandem pandemic on lives as well as economies across the globe. So this is basically a new therapy. They're saying inventing a new therapy, which is this, could change things across the globe. Therefore, now listen to this, therefore, this is their conclusion, therefore, supplementation of probiotics in high-risk and severely ill patients and frontline health workers might limit the infection and flatten the COVID-19 curve. Another tricky word, might. However, okay, currently they're not doing any random controlled trials to demonstrate any conclusive evidence. They're saying maybe, it might, it does, it can, it should. All of those different words are sort of maybe. We're, now, what is the actual conclusion? Is there any evidence? Yes. On the other hand, circumstantial evidence, the actual people on the ground watching these things, collecting the evidence like I have been doing, the circumstantial evidence has supported the presumption that probiotic supplementation decreases the severity of COVID-19 responses, including death, which is mortality. And then they're saying many clinical trials are underway globally. I don't see any. I can't find anybody that's doing any trials on, on probiotics. If you know of somebody, I'd love to hear about it. But they're saying, oh, they're going to jump this right on this. Now, this is from 2021. And guess what? If you go 10, 10 years back, they have this almost the identical same article saying probiotics are so important, they're, they're a new way of treating things, and then they dropped it. That was 10 years before this. So don't think that this is what the problem is. Papers written about this stuff, forget about it. Nobody reads them. Then they just get lost. They just get lost in the mix. And then somebody says, oh, I just invented this. Oh, I just figured this out. No, they didn't. They just never read it in the first place.